thank you for the nice introduction and uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to this yeah, Vienna and it is a very nice opportunity to have a, this kind of in-person talk and actually it is my first experience to uh, talk in, in, in person so it is very nice so yeah thank you for that. Yeah, today um, I'm, I will present with this title probabilistic exact construction of decoders from encoding black boxes and this talk is basically based on this archive uh, paper uh, which is um, our recent work and uh, um, this is basically some okay um, and uh, to begin, uh, sorry. If you want, you can use. Uh -huh. Ah, okay, thanks. Okay, good, so thanks. Okay, so to begin, um, I introduce some basic notion of the quantum information processing and to, yeah. And first, um, in quantum information processing, um, the transformation of a quantum state is often used and it is called quantum uh, operation. And it describes the transformation from input quantum state row in to the output uh, quantum state row out, this kind of thing. And basically, uh, Ah, sorry. Okay. And basically, um, in quantum circuit representation, it is described as a box like this one, a lambda tilde. And, uh, and here, uh, we write the tilde on the quantum operation. And in this talk, um, any, uh, any object with tilde represents a quantum operation. And any, uh, any object with, without tilde represents operator. So it is density operator, so without tilde, but um, it is an operation, so uh, we write the tilde. And then uh, we generalize this uh, uh, concept to the higher order version. Like uh, we consider the transformation of operations, like this one. So we get uh, some input operation lambda in and we transform it to the output operation lambda out, this kind of thing. And, and we call this one as a higher order quantum operation because this is a higher order version of the quantum operation as I defined, but um, it is also uh, called as a quantum supermap or process matrices. Okay. This is a basic fact. And um, in higher order quantum operations, uh, transformations of integer operations have been extensively uh, studied, uh, like this one. Uh, uh, here I put uh, related uh, references, references very randomly, but um, I think um, there are much more uh, work, so please forgive me uh, if I uh, miss some important references. But um, there is a um, problem, I think, because um, um, okay, uh, transformation of integer operation have been studied, but uh, transformations of more general operations than injuries. This is not uh, well investigated yet compared to the injury operations. So in this work, um, I present uh, our uh, uh, recent work on this kind of transformation. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. Uh, here's the outline of this talk. Uh, I'll check. Okay. And first, I, I will recap some kind of uh, formulation of the higher order quantum operation. And then we define the task which we consider in this um, work. And um, next, uh, we uh, uh, talk ab a little bit about uh, some related work called interim version. Because um, um, basically, um, the, our, our work is very based on this kind of this work. And finally, we show two results of this work, and uh, we conclude with some summary. Okay. First, I will, will begin with uh, um, how higher the quantum operation is implemented in the quantum circuit. In general, um, it is implemented using the input operation, lambda in, and the uh, fixed quantum circuit, E, D, between here, and combine them to implement the output operation, lambda out, like this one. And, and uh, okay, um, wh what I showed is a deterministic one, but um, we can also sh uh, consider the probabilistic one using the uh, measurement um, at the end of the quantum circuit, like this one. So here we write the success probability, like this. And, okay, and um, I showed the uh, one slot case, but um, we can also consider the uh, n slot case, like this one. And um, uh, for instance, um, uh, we can consider the um, uh, 
parallel protocol like this one. So we, um, in this case, um, we use uh, uh, input operations in parallel, and we can also consider the sequential protocols like this one. And in the sequential protocol, it's also called the quantum comp, I think, yeah. And here, I, I do not consider the uh, more general case, but um, it is also known that um, um, there is uh, some higher order quantum operation that cannot be implemented by a quantum circuit, and it is called infinite causal order. But in this talk, we especially consider this parallel protocol. Okay. Next, we uh, move to the uh, definition of our task. Our task is isometry inversion, and first we consider the isometry operation. It is an um, um, encoding of quantum state into a higher order dimensional Hebe space, and it is implemented using an uh, uh, auxiliary state zero and initially u. And uh, 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 using these protocols, um, we can encode psi into the um, larger dim dimensional Hebe space, like this one. Okay, and and. Um, yeah, and this operation is also, uh, often used in the encoding. And also, uh, if we encode some quantum state, we need decoding. And it is represented by inverse operation of encoding. Okay. Then we consider the following task. If we are given uh, a black box that implements isometry, how to decode, its, uh, how to decode the encoding operation? That is what we consider. And um, in a uh, language of higher order quantum operation, it is um, uh, uh, represented by this kind of transformation. From encoding black box, we need to implement its inverse operation. That is what we consider. And in detail, uh, we define the task more in detail. And um, we consider the case that we are given k copies of black boxes B. And then our task is to implement inverse operation for inverse um, using the uh, quantum supernova, like this one. OK. And um, this, this task is very related to the uh, work called, uh, the task called injury inversion. And um, um, the special case that um, the capital D equals to D case is the, uh, is, uh, uh, the same as the uh, task called injury inversion. And this unitary inversion is very uh, close to our task, our task and um, the difference is just we replace uh, isometry with unitary. And um, this, this work is very, uh, I mean, uh, there, are very, uh, there are many applications of unitary inversion. And um, for instance, um, time manipulation of Hamiltonian dynamics or reset incoherent noise is a um, uh, no, uh, applications. And, it is, and in this work, um, it is known that um, the, there exists some probabilistic protocol to implement the initial inversion with this success probability. Okay. This is the known fact. And um, we briefly sketched the uh, uh, idea of the initial inversion in this work. And the idea, is that we, uh, idea was that um, decomposing initial inversion into two subroutines First one is compressed conjugation, and second one is transposition. That was the main idea. And uh, compressed conjugation uh, can be done using the, some kind of uh, this um, uh, uh, decomposition of U tensor D minus one. Okay, and the, get, and the transposition part is uh, done by some kind of teleportation technique to uh, the teleportation technique, this kind of circuit. And um, using uh, these subroutines, uh, we combine, okay, uh, this part represents a uh, complex conjugation, and this part uh, represents a uh, transposition. And combining this, we can implement the interim version. Okay. Okay, that was the uh, uh, previous work. But if we generalize this, uh, this uh, strategy to the isometry case, there uh, appears some problem. That is due to the uh, uh, complex conjugation part. The complex con conjugation part was uh, implemented by using some representation uh, property of the uh, mutual group. So, uh, okay, we consider the direct extension of this kind of thing. And um, maybe we can consider that um, we can implement isometric inversion by combining complex conjugation and transposition as well. But since isometry does not form a group, so 
uh, does not form a group, um, this kind of technique cannot be directly extended. Or, so I mean, um, whether complex conjugation of isometry co is possible or not is not so trivial. So uh, this is the problem. So we consider the um, following questions. First one is to, um, is it possible to implement isometric inversion? And the second one is, if possible, what is the difference with the unitary inversion? Okay, that was the research questions. Okay. And uh, uh, here is the result of, the, uh, of, of this work. And the uh, first one is to construct the probabilistic protocol for isometric inversion. So the question, the, the answer for the question one was to yes, we can implement it. And um, this is the result. Um, okay, so if we are given, uh, oh, sorry, um, if we are given uh, asymmetry B, then we can implement its inverse with this success probability. Here, D is the input dimension of the asymmetry, and K is the number of copies used for the protocol. And the uh, important point here is that um, this success probability does not depend on the output dimension of asymmetry D, asymmetry B. And the main idea to construct this protocol is to uh, construct the um, uh, CPTP map psi that satisfies this lemma. The, the lemma shows that um, uh, if we are given some copies of isometry, and uh, if we apply psi after the copies of uh, isometry B, then um, the implemented operation is the same as a uh, uh, randomized parallel unitary U like this one. Here, you, du is the how measure. Okay. And, uh, okay. And using this quantum, uh, uh, sorry, CPT to upside, um, we can uh, construct the uh, asymmetric inversion protocol as follows. Okay. So, um, okay. So first, uh, we consider the first in integer inversion protocol, shown like this one. So. Uh, yeah, this um, orange part represents the uh, uh, super channel for the quantum uh, unitary inversion. And if we input the unitary U to the, this slot, then it implements the UD dagger probabilistically. If we are given such kind of uh, quantum operation, then we can implement the isometric inversion protocol like this. We insert the CPT map psi here, and we replace U to the isometry B. Then we can show that this implements the isometric inversion protocol. And the proof is as follows. If imp okay, so um, we consider the case when the input state is given as a V or V dagger. Then uh, our goal to show is that, um, uh, uh, show is that, uh, so this output quantum state should be low, right? So um, our goal is to show this one. So first, um, we divide the condition that rho in V rho equals V rho V dagger at this, in this quantum circuit. Then we use the uh, lemma I showed. Then uh, combining this part, we can show that, uh, as lemma shows, um, so this part corresponds to this one. Because, um, yeah, so basically, uh, Basically, isometry B transforms to the U, like this one. And since uh, this orange part represents the protocol for unitary inversion, uh, this blue region is the same as the UD dagger, right? So therefore, uh, this blue part and this UD cancels out. Therefore, the output is the same as the row here. And the and since um, rho in is given v rho v dagger, this rho is the same as uh, uh, the uh, quantum state that is obtained by applying the inverse operation v to the rho in. This completes the proof. So, it, so this part implements the uh, inverse operation of v. That is the proof. OK. And uh, maybe I have no time, so, but uh, I, I, I don't have no time, but um, um, 
the this CPT pull-up side can be constructed by some representation theory, but um, uh, I will skip this part. But basically, um, it is not so complicated. Yeah, and um, in the, uh, our protocol. Uh, okay, so next we consider the how uh, the success probability is good in our protocol, and uh, to consider um, this kind of performance comparison, um, uh, we consider more. Uh, we consider the following uh, situation. Um, um, Sometimes uh, asymmetry B is given as, sorry, um, as I explained earlier, um, asymmetry B can be um, uh, obtained by using octal state zero and unitary U. So, and, uh, okay, so instead of the black box B, um, we consider the case where the, this unitary U is given as a black box instead. Then uh, we can, we can uh, consider the following Okay, so we can consider the following strategy to implement isometric inversion just by inverting this unitary U. Okay, so we consider, we com compare um, this strategy to, the, to our strategy. However, um, since this unitary is a capital D dimensional one, um, this success probability depends on capital D. So uh, when the capital D is very larger than the D, uh, there is a very difference between our, our work and the uh, uh, strategy using the inter inversion. For instance, for the qubit, five qubit case, that is D equals two and the capital D equals to the two to the five case, um, we can compare the work and we can compare this kind of thing. Uh, this uh, x-axis is uh, query complexity. That means uh, number of copies uh, used for the protocol, number of copies of the black boxes. And the y axis is the success probability. And this blue line shows uh, um, our work success probability. And uh, this uh, uh, red line represents the uh, uh, strategy using the unitary embedding strategy. And as, as, I, as shown in this figure, um, there is a very large difference with this kind of thing. So, for instance, um, if we use 20 times of the black boxes, which are embedding strategy does not succeed in a non zero success probability, but our, our strategy uh, works uh, with a success probability like, uh, uh, I forgot the uh, strict value, but um, like 80% um, or 90% or something. So this is not so bad. Okay. okay. So I will, okay, so that was the first result. And I will next uh, present the second result on the difference with the unitary inversion and the isometric inversion. Okay, so as I explained earlier, um, unitary inversion can be implemented using uh, 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 concatenating two subroutines, complex conjugation and the transposition. So um, the natural question is that uh, can we construct the similar strategy for isometric inversion? That is a na uh, natural question, and I, we consider this kind of. So uh, we consider the possibility of isometric complex conjugation and isometric transposition. And the result is that we cannot. First result for isometric complex conjugation is that if the uh, output dimension D is larger than the uh, two times D, which is the input dimension, then uh, probabilistic exact isometric complex conjugation is impossible. And we can show this uh, theorem using a uh, no-go theorem for state, uh, state version of a complex conjugation. Uh, sorry, um, it is known that uh, if we are given some black box state phi, um, it is impossible to obtain the complex conjugate state phi star is a probabilistic exact way, uh, which is already known in this literature. And using this uh, no-go theorem, we can show this theorem three. Okay, we, to, to show that, we consider the isometry B, that is this kind of quantum circuit, like um, adding a 
some auxiliary state phi to the input state. Then, uh, then if we, we can implement the uh, uh, complex conjugate of isometry B, it shows that um, we can also implement the uh, complex conjugate of this phi like this. But as I showed, um, this state complex conjugation is impossible. Therefore, uh, we cannot implement the uh, isometry uh, complex conjugation. And um, next result is that um, for transposition of isometry. And uh, for this transposition, um, there exists some protocol for isometry transposition. And um, uh, we can uh, implement transposition of isometry using the similar strategy for initial case, which is uh, basically teleportation. And we showed that um, if we use the uh, port-based teleport, uh, some modified version of port-based teleportation to implement the isometry transposition, uh, the success probability is like this one. And the important thing here is that um, there appears the output dimension capital D, right? So it means that, uh, okay, transposition can be implemented but um, success probability depends on capital D, so it is not so good in terms of the success probability. Okay. So, so in conclusion, uh, uh, the decomposition of isometry inversion to these two subroutines are impossible due to the no theorem for complex conjugation, and also, uh, transposition itself uh, is not so good idea to implement the inversion because um, the success probability is not good. <coughs> okay. Um, okay, let us summarize this talk. Um, first, we uh, define the task isometry inversion, which is basically the decoding of a black box uh, isometry B using K copies. And we showed that um, the, we can implement this task with the success probability uh, shown here. And this is independent of the output dimension, capital D, and which makes a very significant difference with um, uh, the protocol using the initial inversion. And the main idea was to implement the CPT map psi, which transforms isometry B to initially U. And we also showed the difference between the initial inversion and the isometry inversion by considering complex conjugation and the transposition. Okay, uh, that's all. And um, this is a link for the archive paper. So if you are interested in, please check it out. <laughs> okay, thank you. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, so, okay, the, okay, thank you for the question. And um, the, no, this, so, uh, this proof is uh, based on this uh, novel theorem for state complex conjugation. And if we are given a state phi, then we can implement this asymmetry B. So if you are given this phi, you can implement the right asymmetry B? Yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, so maybe the. Yeah, exactly, yes. Uh, oh, so with, uh, this is for any number of users? Uh, yes. Asymptotically, uh, somehow you can run the limit, but then mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. for any finite k number mm -hmm. of I think some upper bound on the fidelity of the uh, uh, task is known. Uh, yeah. 
and which is one when we proceed the asymptotic case, but um, for why not case, yes, the feed rate is less than one. Yes. Uh, okay, so uh, if the output dimension, the output dimension and the input dimension is the same, uh, it is, uh, okay, so maybe I will show the construction. Okay, so if the um, capital D is equal to the D, which means that um, isometry is linear, then um, this uh, uh, part, is somehow trivial one. So it is the same as the initial inversion protocol. So the success probability is the same. Yes. Yeah. Uh, zero, zero, yes. Oh, it's zero. Oh, it's zero. Oh, okay. uh, and, and, and the unitary embedding, what is the unitary embedding? Uh, 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 okay, okay, sorry. Um, this, is, uh, this strategy we call unitary embedding strategy. Yes. No, um, I mean, um, here uh, I just show that um, uh, we consider a little bit different situation. So, um, uh, okay, so, okay, you are right. Um, if, even if we are given an asymmetry B, we, um, it is not trivial how to implement this initially, right? Yeah, that's, what, that's the thing. But um, in many situations, um, asymmetry is, uh, is given as this kind of quantum circuit. So we consider a little bit uh, relaxed situation. So um, even if we are given this kind of initial U, uh, we show that um, the direct application of initial inversion is not so helpful in terms of the success probability. That is what I show. Uh, that, that is? Yeah, no, but I'm, I'm worried about the other samples, like uh, the, 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 the uh, Sorry. Uh, maybe. This kind of thing. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. this, uh, this, uh, box, uh, yes. D, D, D. Yes. How, how, how are you going to do that? How to, sorry? How are you going to implement that? Like physically, how, how, how is that going to happen? Um, this? Yes. Uh, given uh, the black boxes, so we can have access to use this one. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, okay. Um, the, the one, the one. Uh -huh. Like, how should you tell me, like, what's the input and what's the output? Like, how should you tell me the input and what's the output? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I don't uh, know, see how. I don't know what about what to do with that. Um, yes.
I, I prepare the black box and I give it like to him for the for to use. And then he something like this. But then I shield it in a way that this goes outside and this comes inside. And this big thing becomes a leaf. Yes, so um, in this work, um, we consider, uh, okay, so we also um, maybe, um, we also consider the uh, sequential scenario in the, uh, in this, uh, sorry, I will, <laughs> in this paper. And um, in that paper, we also, we uh, only consider, we only induct uh, uh, numerical analysis. Ah, okay. And um, using the, uh, we show that um, success, well, job uh, strategy can be work in this kind of isometric versions protocol for some uh, uh, small d and capital D and k number codes. Yeah, so some kind of sequential protocol can be, can improve the unitary version. Yeah. 